right. Uh, well, welcome everybody, and I will call the combined special and regular meetings of the trustees of the Tulsa Airports Improvement Trust and the members of the Tulsa Airport Authority to order. Today's Thursday, April 13th, 2023 at 8.30 a.m. First item is approval of the minutes of the March 9th meeting. A motion. Approve, approve. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. CEO and CFO reports. Well, wants to go first. I will start. Um, <laughs> and I have a lot of good news and positive things to share. First off, I'd like to welcome Bergetta officially to the leadership team ranks at Tulsa. All right. Very good. Bergetta has over 40 years of experience here at the airport, and she'll be serving as our director of finance and asset management. Um, and has already been doing the role now for a month and a half or so yeah. as, as in interim or longer than that, actually. But I'm happy to have her officially at the table. And yeah. um, we also have several employees who have recently achieved industry certifications. And anytime an employee invests in their own development, we as the airport get the benefit of that. And so Kevin Lawn, who's our assistant controller, soon to be controller, <laughs> um, got received his CM, which is the certified member exam through AAAE. He passed that. And so did Danielle Logan, who's in airfield operations. Um, we're super excited that two of them have passed that very strenuous, comprehensive 180 question exam. And then one of our police officers, Lieutenant Steve Hunt, um, recently became a certified law enforcement officer through AAAE. AAAE has an airport certified employee program and you can do it in security, operations, all different fields. And he did the law enforcement exam. And you know, one of Jeff's um, priorities is to try to get our police officers engaged in the aviation aspect of their role here at the airport. And Lieutenant, Lieutenant Hunt's participation in that program really gives him much broader perspective. Um, this week, speaking of our, uh, our police department is National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. It's a mouthful, but basically it's recognizing the employees who answer the phone when you call dispatch at the airport, 5030, which is the catch-all number for everything. Not only do they respond to emergencies and support our police department, they monitor our security alarms, our fire alarms, um, they're, man they're taking calls regarding maintenance issues. They really are, the I would say, probably the most multitasking dispatch center in the city of Tulsa. And um, it's a team of six employees, and they just do a great job. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, we've struggled at times in getting people to fill that position because mm -hmm. it's such a multitasking position. But uh, we have a good team in place today, and I think um, it's nice. Our police chief and our manager has done a great job recognizing those employees this week. Um, next week is National Volunteer Appreciation Week, um, and this is a time where we Take a few minutes. Um, we encourage all of our employees also to step out and recognize the work our volunteers are doing. We have 153 total volunteers today. 25 of them are welcome wagon volunteers, meaning they have a four-legged friend that accompanies them on their visits. In 2022, our volunteers contributed over 17,000 hours of time to the airport. Um, and this is service that we really couldn't pay for. You know, they are so engaged and eager to serve. Six of our volunteers are over 90 years old. Um, they're just dedicated to the work that they do. The average age is 69. And that number is decreasing a little bit because the welcome wagon volunteers tend to be a little bit younger. But uh, Brian and Michelle and our customer service team have all kinds of activities planned for our volunteers next week. And if you happen to be at the airport, um, I've encouraged all of our employees as they're walking past the desk just to stop and tell them thank you for being here. Um, a couple of exciting things. The picture on the board is from last week. We, we partnered with the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission to host the first ever mm -hmm. Oklahoma Student Pilot Day. So the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission is focused on delivering um, high school curriculum to students who have an interest in aviation. Students can graduate from high school with their drone pilot's license or their ground school complete on their way to get their pilot's license. We had over 400 students from across the state here up at Hangar 80 
Um, all of our equipment, you can see on the right side of that screen, all of that brightly colored equipment is airborne equipment, just to give the students some perspective. But they, the guard brought an F-16 over. We had a great military presence. And this is an event that we hope to grow every year. They actually want to make Tulsa the home for this event every year because of the Air and Space Museum and its proximity. It worked out well. The groups kind of transitioned through different stations. And um, I see this being an annual event. I'm curious, how many, uh, or do you have the figure, how many of them are interested in drones versus being actual pilots? I think it's a mixed bag. I don't have the figure. Yeah. Um, it, you know, the drone pilot option is a growing option, and kids are just intuitively good at yeah. picking that up. Yeah. And so I think it's... One of the things that we discussed next year is we have a drone, and so we would like to set up our drone next year to let the students see how the application applies in an airport setting. Um, but it's it's a growing field. Um, yeah. Something else that I learned yesterday, I talked with someone at Union Public Schools. They're implementing this program next year. They already have 117 freshmen enrolled in the program next year. Wow. Um, and like 73% of those students are on fixed, um, are on the reduced lunch mm -hmm. um, program. And so this program is free to schools and it really has the ability to bring curriculum to students that otherwise wouldn't experience it. And so we're, we're doing all we can to support them and right. provide local students. I mean, it's, it, the state's program is really statewide and rural focused as well, but it's important to us. I know um, Cole has gotten the Claremore schools involved. And so we're really just trying to get our area schools plugged in. Right. Um, we also had a partnership last month that we announced at the end of the month with the Met um, School, which is just down the street from the airport. Um, this is a school from, for middle to high school students, um, and the airport's just agreed to work with them as we try to expose their students to aviation careers. And we have an intern here from the Met, Yavana is over here. She's interested in exploring careers in aviation, potentially working for an airline but we're trying to get her to see the airport side of things. Um, <laughs> but this is a partnership that we will continue and every year have a couple of students from the high school spend Tuesdays and Thursdays with us here at the airport. Great. So <laughs> looking forward to, to that continued partnership. And then we had some big news. Um, Andrew Perini <laughs> attended the Roots Americas um, conference. This was at the end of March. Now this is a conference that air, we've attended just to meet with airlines. That's our main purpose when we go. Um, but he found out we were nominated for an award in their, they don't call it small airports, they say under 4 million passengers. Um, it's a national global conference, um, but really focused on the Americas, so South, Central, and North America. Um, we won that small airports category, the under 4 million passengers. Um, we were up against Curacao, Idaho Falls, and Tia Green, which is Providence. And so that was exciting. And then um, later in the evening, they announced that Tulsa actually won the overall award. Thank you. Um, because not only are, are we there represented, but all of the airlines in the house saw that and were able to hear the good work that we're doing to secure and retain service in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. And so I have no mm -hmm. doubt that that exposure will lead to other great things as far as our air service development efforts. Alexis, can we splash that a little more? I mean, I've told several people about that and they give me this deer in the headlights book. Like, yes. Well, I didn't know that. Did I? I mean, we need to kick the Tulsa world again. And I think maybe, we need it. Maybe the TV station. <laughs> no, I think the problem is we have some folks that are pretty modest about this accomplishment. I don't need to put, we don't need to put his picture in there. Yeah. We should use his name, likeness, yeah. and yeah. image. No, we can just make it our profile picture on Facebook. Yeah. So we've gotten. We've gotten a lot of good press in, within the industry, but probably need to do a little bit more. I think we need to do it to people. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think that's that takes some, everyone knows the facility's great, loves the facility. They need to know we're award winning. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I think that yeah. Well, I'll I'll work on that. Sorry, Andrew. Sorry, Andrew. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, we did uh, officially launch a partnership with the Blue Lightning Initiative with um, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security last month. Um, we had over 200 employees, not just our employees, but 
employees in the airport complex attend training um, just so that we are better, more aware of the signs to spot human trafficking victims and try to make sure that we respond and notify authorities whenever we have concerns. Um, two weeks ago, we, I'm gonna, I'm not skipping through to you yet, but two <laughs> weeks ago, um, we participated in a day-long design review meeting for the tower. And I say we, Frank, and the building maintenance and several of our team members participated. So um, we are about 50% complete with the design. Um, Frank scared me a little because we did get a new construction estimate and he wasn't reading it right away, but then he came in and told me it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It did increase by about 7 million, 6 million, however, <laughs> We have over, when we think about the FAA, they told us, you know, this $27 million punch we're going to have to take. We think that that will absorb that $6 million increase. So I'm not concerned really with that increase at this point. Um, it is interesting that the FAA administrator for um, facilities and equipment was flying through and stopped in yesterday to check on how the project's going. So I think that's a good sign. But uh, the project's continuing. We're on track to have all the design work complete by, definitely by the end of this year. And, and the plan is to go out to bid and have our bids ready to go so that when we submit and hopefully receive an FAA grant to support the project, we'll be ready to actually initiate the contract. So that would be February of next year, probably. And we did have the final RVS master plan public meeting. And so later on in the agenda, Austin and Frank will give an update on that. Um, but I have several dates that I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of and we can talk after the meeting if you'd like more information. But this Saturday is the first ever FC Tulsa Aviation Night. And so the airport is the presenting sponsor for that event in partnership with Breeze to promote Breeze's service to Orlando. Um, they are giving away aviation themed t-shirts and 20,000 Breeze points um, to someone who's in attendance. Um, the Tulsa Global Alliance Taking Flight Gala is April the 20th, and um, we are being recognized as a, a partner um, of TGA and the work that they do to welcome international visitors to Tulsa. The group from France just left yesterday, I think, so they definitely spend a lot of time in the airport. And then April 22nd is the Aviator Ball um, here at the Tulsa Air and Space Museum. Tickets are still available for that. It's a luau theme, so... Um, hopefully it won't be hot like a luau, but, and then April 29th is Girls in Aviation um, event at, at Hangar 80. This is an event that's planned by Oklahoma State University and, and some of their students and instructors that they've asked for volunteers. Last year, they had about 200 students participate. This year, we're trying to double that. So lots of events going on in the months ahead and uh, exciting things happening. And with that, I'll let Rosetta enlighten us on financials. <clears throat> All right, so this first slide is the activity report and we'll be comparing February 23 through February 22, the first eight months of the fiscal years. Um, the revenues, February 23 revenues are 23% higher than February 22 with approximately $687,000 separating the month over month. With the fiscal year to date comparison, we we're at 17% more than the same period last year, or about $4.6 million of additional revenue dollars. Operating expenses are only 3% higher for the month over month, but 15% greater in the year over year, or $2.2 million more for the fiscal year to date comparison. This results in a 63% increase in the uh, net budget to income over month over month but the fiscal year date is only 20% higher in fiscal year 23 over 22 with a net increase of approximately 2.4 million. Our um, vendors continue to do well. Uh, the food and beverage gross, gross revenues are up as they experienced a 44% increase from February 23 compared, when compared to February 22. And they're up 37% for the fiscal year to date comparisons, or $1.3 million more in sales for food and beverage. Retail gross revenues are up 44% for the month to month comparison and increased 16% in the fiscal year over fiscal year. Parking activity is uh, 
It's reflecting an increase as usual. Ticket pools were up 20% for the monthly comparison and 19% for the fiscal year comparison. Parking revenues are up also 46%. That's uh, 298000 when comparing February 23 to February 22. You know, we do every month, we say we remind that we had a rate increase, so the dollars aren't quite as reflective as the activity of how well the parking is doing. Um, the fiscal year over fiscal year is at 37% or around $2.4 million. Our ground transportation uh, for the month of February generated revenue in an amount of $30,984. That's up $14,000 or 86% from February 22. The fiscal year to date has increased 50% from fiscal year 22 or about $84,000. The rental car transaction days are up 28% for the monthly comparison and 14% for the year over year. RVS operations were up 58% for the month of February and are trending 14% greater than for the previous fiscal year. Fuel flow fees at RVS were also up 22% for the month over month and they're trending only 4% above this year to date comparison. And we think we had weather last February. In plane passengers have increased 27% when comparing the months to month and 18% when comparing the fiscal year to date. In plain cargo increased 13% for the month to month and 4% for the year over year. So this next slide is uh, just a visual comparison of our employment. You can see that we're at 27% uh, over last February. And then this slide is uh, just a visual of our revenues. The fiscal year 23 is the orange line, and fiscal year 22 is in red. So we're just following those same trends. Hopefully, we continue to <coughs> increase as we're doing. <coughs> same thing at expenses. This is just a visual. You know, February to February is just almost identical at about $2 million. And the, this slide compares our budget to actual. So you can see that we're at 13% uh, higher than the budget last fiscal year. It's about $3.6 million more than uh, we had planned for. The largest contributors are rental car and parking and a 24% increase over budget. That's $2.5 million. Passenger and air carrier are six percent greater than anticipated, or about four hundred seventy-three thousand dollars. <laughs> and miscellaneous income is up twenty-seven percent, or five hundred fifty-three thousand dollars. Expenses are four percent under budget for the first eight months, or that's six hundred fifty-six thousand dollars. Salaries and benefits are the largest gaps, with about eight percent below budget. Materials and supplies are up by two percent, and Services are right on track with just 1% over budget. So we are netting like 4.3 million more than we expected when we prepared the budget about this time last year. <laughs> this is the fiscal year to date comparison. Uh, revenues are up 17% over the same period for last fiscal year. Passenger and air carrier is a 7% gain or $540,000. Parking and rent a car are 34% above the previous fiscal year, or $3.2 million. Miscellaneous revenues are up 35%, or about $673,000. And expenses are through February are 15% higher when compared to February 22, or about $2.2 million more. Salaries make up 14% or about $1 million of that. Materials and supplies make up 19% or about $210,000. And the services are up 15% or about $931,000. We still have a positive net gain of $2.4 million more than we or had in a net operating before uh, the previous fiscal year. 
depreciation and debt service are about 20% more than we had the same time last year. So this last slide is our base of cash on hand. So at the end of February, we had about $27.8 million of unrestricted cash, or that equates to 343 days of cash on hand. Our burn rate is approximately $81,000 per day based on our operating budget, which includes operating capital. Our scheduled debt service is $14.1 million for fiscal year 23, with the first nine months paid or reserved with about $3.5 million dollars remaining for fiscal year 23. And in debt service reserves, we had about 16.2 million, which equates to about 1.8 million months, months of excess debt service reserve. Any questions? You know, I, you know, uh, I mean, it's a great report. I guess the question I have, I mean, this is kind of the second month that we've had 20, 30, 40% increases in certain revenue items. When does that level up? I mean, that's not sustainable. Over it, At some point, we're going to plateau. And uh, have you all thought about kind of what level that is? Um, I think. I know a lot of this is just catching up and then kind of making up for kind of the, the, the lost. The, increased revenue over time. I think the largest impact we're seeing is from parking revenues. Okay. And what's happening is behavior of customers is changing a little bit. Um, people are taking longer trips. That There's the leisure travel. Yeah. The traveler is combining the business and leisure trip and the trips are longer. Um, so like we filled up during spring break in our parking garage, mm -hmm. um, which is typically not a time pre-COVID pre that we would have filled up. I mean, we were busy, but definitely not full. Um, and then, I mean, I have to say the effort our team has done to promote our parking operations. Our marketing campaign for our parking has been extremely successful. And um, I think we're capturing a larger share of parking than we did in the past. And so what we're doing, in fact, after this meeting today, we're sitting down to talk about a longer, um, a sh shorter term, immediate response, like for the summer midterm and long-term parking capacity constraints and how are we going to address them and coming up with a plan to be able to support additional valet parking because valet was full all of our products were full and so um we think we're going to continue to grow i mean i think based on everything we've seen from air service um, we might have a hiccup with this predicted recession a little bit right. but um just the work that the tulsa community is doing i think is momentum building and so we have to be sure that we're prepared to provide the facilities and infrastructure that will allow that revenue to continue to grow right did i miss anything for that so uh, i'm just just as our passengers coming back they're spending more and so we're yeah more yeah I, and and some of the restaurants must be opening up <laughs> a little more capacity because i mean food and beverage revenue is way up uh so yeah Every, everything's kind of opening back up so it's really kind of a catch-up i guess from the pandemic and mm -hmm. but i I just know that my phone is going to get there at some point in time so so we really monitor airline seat capacity because yeah. that really determines what our potential revenue could be as far as inside the terminal building and so that's something that um Berdetta and andrew work on looking at forecasted schedules and you know historical utilization of, of the capacity that's available and so all of that no, great report great job i just uh, uh, to, just to kind of add jan feb of 2022 was still significantly down you know down 20 yeah. 25 percent compared to where we were this year yeah, yeah. so even in March, we're up seven percent. So it's not going to be the twenty-five percent that you're seeing. Yeah, it's going to narrow slowly bit. narrow down. Um, so that was that's why you're seeing that because we were still significantly down in January, February, twenty twenty-two. Yeah. Um, and then right now through October, we're up where we stand now in terms of capacity about thirteen percent. So if things stay where they are, and airlines don't kind of trim down, we're still going to see that growth, but it's not going to be the yeah, the twenty, you know, double digit, yeah, plus percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's great report, great job.
we're setting ourselves up um, for a good run for a number of years, I think. So, yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Anything else? That it? Um, that's it for that. And then for the RVS master plan. Austin here to give that update. Yeah, so like Alexa said, we had our uh, last open house March 30th, a few weeks ago, uh, to present kind of our proposal for the master plan build out. Um, I'm sure you all have seen this. This is it on the board. Um, the, the big ticket items being 600 foot extensions off of the ends of the runway um, to provide for more takeoff space for our larger aircraft. Um, the landing thresholds for this runway would remain untouched. And so that's how we can maintain and keep the current RPCs that we have published to ensure uh, the uses off of the end of the runway can remain. Um, it does show, as you can see at the north end, there is an impact to 81st Street with rerouting that as well as the airport perimeter road um, with that extension just to provide the, the clear zone off the end of the runway. But for 91st and the golf course, um, you know, kind of the, the big ticket items for our surrounding community, those would remain unchanged. So this is what we have kind of wrapped up, sent it off to the FAA um, to kind of get their thoughts um, before we have the final airport layout plan, which is a more technical drawing of this, um, much more line, squiggly line commit. They'll send our consultant, RSNH, we'll get that to us about mid-June. Um, we get about a week to review, comment on that. Um, after the comment period, then we'll submit that to the FAA for the true uh, FAA approval of our <laughs> new airport layout plan, which is what we use as the roadmap moving forward through this master plan. Um, we're also waiting on the implementation plan from our consultant, as well as the financial feasibility so you can kind of marry the two together so you can start pulling out, this is what we're planning to budget for this project. Um, and we can pull from that to then feed into our capital improvement plan as, as we move forward uh, once we have this in place. So the end of June is when we're expecting to send all that to the FAA. Um, Frank, I'm not 100% sure. Do you know how long the FAA has for their approval process? You know, they run it through all their channels to, to review on their end before getting it back to us and with, with the stamp on it. But um, mid-summer is when we expect to ship that off to them. I would say if we get it back, yeah. if we get it back in 30 days, we'll be real Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't expect it last 60 days. I was, was going to get 90. 30 days would be more of a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, after that, after that 90 day, I'm going to ballpark 90 days from the FAA. Um, we could have it stamped and have our master plan at the right one. Great job. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. The tone of the public meeting was very different this morning. It was a great public meeting, a lot of interaction with attendees. I think overall, we were very pleased. We have RSNH here, um, but their team worked with us on a communication strategy that was right fitted for what we were trying to accomplish. And yeah. so um, I think I'm very pleased with the result. Yeah. And so, and, and our tenants are, and the community members that I visited with at the public meeting and our team visited with all were pleased with this solution. Good, yeah. good deal. All right, um, administrative finance and all that other stuff. Uh, <laughs> Number four, except selection for professional service. Garber, who, who's next? there, I'll take that one. Um, <clears throat> except, uh, number four, accept selection and approve professional services agreement with Garber LLC for electrical consulting services for one year with four one year options to renew for the amount not to exceed $100,000. The airport received four statements of qualifications. This contract provides electrical engineering, consulting, and on call slash troubleshooting professional services on an as-needed basis. Garver will bill hourly uh, rates for actual work performed uh, TUL contract of 23070. Okay. Any questions? I have a motion. Move approval. Okay. All in favor, say aye. Aye. 
Opposed, no. Motion carries. Number five. So number five is to accept proposals and approve the health benefit insurance broker services agreement with NFP Corporation for one year with four one-year options. This is for our health and um, wellness benefit program, um, just formalizing the agreement that we have with the NFP. Okay. Move approval. Second. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you choose. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Stava on the motion. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Number six. Item number six, good morning. Uh, item number six is approved change order number four with Bronze Oak LLC in the amount of $33,953.35 for the functional needs area of the project. This change provides for, for furnishing and installing new cabinets, countertops, plumbing fixtures in both uh, service animal relief areas as well as the adult changing room. Um, the change provide, also provides money to furnish and install additional cabling to the uh, computer monitors for the, the large screens in the in the rooms. And this also adds 86 calendar days to the project. As of right now, with this change order, we're 8.2% over the original bid contract amount. Uh, this project will be done before Memorial Day. I believe twenty third is the drop dead date of May, and there will be a ribbon cutting. So, okay, that's my recommends approval. Mm -hmm. Right in that down frame. That's, yeah. that's what I said. <laughs> second. Right. Got a motion. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 No. Motion carries. Number seven. Item number seven is approved change order number three with Keith Construction Company LLC in the amount of $14,692 for the escalator replacement project phase four. Uh, this change provides funding to install, furnish and install steel and glass barriers to go around the back side of the escalators on A and B. Right now, there are areas underneath the escalators that are not covered by cameras. We can't see back there. These walls, these glass walls, will keep the public from moving around to the back side of that. Um, this change, with this change, we're 4.3% over the bid price. Uh, management recommends approval. Move approval item seven. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those no. Motion carries. I'm curious, um, could you not just wall that up? I'm 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 thinking with storage space. I mean, it's not, you, you we never do have, have storage, storage space behind the behind and below the escalators. These will be glass, basically doors, swing doors. Okay, mm -hmm. excuse me, so that we can continue to access that area. But it's a, a physical barrier to keep the public from going right, right there. Right. <laughs> okay. Good deal. Uh, number eight. Item no. 8 is approved change order number 2, Keith Construction Company, LLC, in the amount of $14,941 for the replacement, for the, for the replace, to replace Concourse B exit lane <laughs> security door project. Um, again, this will provide funding to add, again, glass partitions between on both sides of the exit lane. We've got an exit lane through there, and then we've got a space, and then we have the existing wall. We've got to wall that off to keep the passengers from just walking through there. And also on the other side, if you look at the exit lane, you'll see swing doors or emergency doors. We've got to have a partition between those doors and the exit lane to block that off as well. Uh, okay. This will have also add 14 days, calendar days for the project. Uh, we're at 5.2% over the bid price on uh, the exit lane doors. Management recommends approval of item eight. Okay. Move approval on. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those no. Motion carried. Mm -hmm. Item nine, accept project and approved final payment with Fabric <coughs> Tech Structures LLC in amount of $42,048. And two cents. This uh, 
replaces the fabric on the rivals roadway canopy. Uh, this project closed out, will close out 3.2% over the bid price. Uh, management recommends approval of item nine. Approval item nine. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion carried. Number 10. Airport code. I'm taking number 10. Um, right. This is just to provide an update to the board regarding the development of the hotel right here at the entrance to the airport. In June of 21, um, we came to the board with this the schedule. Um, the schedule completion date at the time was May 1st of 2023. Um, needless to say, there have been some challenges with supply chain and um, at and we, we found out there's a fiber line that was adjacent to the hotel that um, actually caused them to have to push back the location of the hotel by a few feet. Um, and at and took a lot longer to get the work done than what was anticipated. And so um, we have some pictures here that the Pete Patel provided and Pete is here with us today. Yeah. Um, Frank, if you wanna scroll through, I think there's one more picture after this. But construction is progressing, and there's one more. Um, this is what it looks like behind that that fence that we have walled off just to keep people out. Um, they believe still that they can have construction complete and a CO certificate of occupancy by the end of July. Um, I think that that's very optimistic. Pete, I don't know if you think that that's optimistic or not, but from the schedule I've seen, everything has to fall exactly into place. To, to get when to were these point. pictures taken? When were these pictures taken? Uh, they were taken Monday. Okay, and this week. Yeah. Pete, you want to say anything? Sure, absolutely. Um, as, as Alexis uh, alluded, we we had like almost every construction project in America, a lot of supply chain issues. Uh, at t was one of the biggest challenges we've had. We had to work around them, them moving the line. Uh, it, the line was going directly underneath the Clarion Hotel. Uh, we didn't realize that till the demolition crew started digging up, and at t did not, they didn't have a record of it. And so when the demolition crew found out there's a line here called at t and then they marked it, um, with the help of Alexis's team, uh, we were able to convince at and to move the line in the easement. So, but they took a long time and that, that ate up a lot of time. Uh, they finally finished that moving in February of this year. They promised that they would have it done in August of last year. So we had to kind of work around that. That caused some delays. And then things like windows, I mean, windows are taking six months to arrive. Right. Uh, electrical switch gear uh, to get permanent power is 14 months out. And so you almost have to order that before the contract sign. Right. Um, and, and so these are these are some of the challenges. Yeah. Um, How are your HVAC units? Or, uh... so, so we use p tax in the guest rooms those are readily available yeah uh, but we have secured the commercial the public area hvacs and all of that those yeah. have been secured there some are some of those are way 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 down <clears throat> yeah so yeah exactly okay. and then found out today uh this this is the shell and then there'll be a stucco on top of that the foam just arrived yesterday and it should have been here back in january so these are some of the challenges they're having. Um, I think we're asking for an extension of the completion date. Uh, contractor feels good about July. I think Alexis probably thinks it's more like August. Maybe that's probably uh, more, more accurate, but, but we're excited. It's gonna be a beautiful hotel and can't wait for you guys to get in there when it's close to being complete to see the project. Okay. I would bet on August September first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we we of course we're, we're doing a lot of it. <laughs> hoping to get it done before the summer travel rush. The Patels are still paying their mag, their minimum annual guarantee, um, despite not having a hotel on the site. And so, um, but it's just a service that our customers, I think, will 
be excited about utilizing. And so we're looking forward to having the project complete and um, the benefit that we'll gain from having the additional revenues. Yeah. And then our TIF district will gain from yeah. having the hotel generate hotel <clears throat> lodging tax. So um, progress is definitely being made and we appreciate the update. And so at, the, at this point, September 1st is kind yeah. of the date we're shooting for. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Well, and I hope to beat that date. Okay. 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 That'd be good. Thanks for coming yeah, in. Thank you. Thank you. Number 11. Item 11. Approve non signatory air carrier sublease and license agreement with Breeze Aviation Group, Inc. for one year effective June 1, 2023. Approval item 11. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those no, motion carries. Number 12. Item 12, revise approval <laughs> for temporary sublease agreement with Tulsa Police Department to reflect the city of Tulsa as lessee and revised term effective April 1, 2023 through June 30, 2023. This is for Cargo Building 1. Okay. Leave approval. Second. All in favor say aye. Those no. 13. And I'm going to read 13 through 16 together if that's okay. okay consideration. Item 13, approve assignment and sublease of sublease and acknowledgement and consent to assignment from Premier Jet Center, Inc., DBA Legacy Jet Center, to Mercury Air Center, Tulsa, LLC, DBA Atlantic Aviation, effective upon closing scheduled April 14, 2023, but no later than April 30, 2023. Item 14, approve sub landlords estoppel for the benefit of Mercury Air Center, Tulsa, LLC, DBA Atlantic Aviation, Effective upon closing, scheduled April 14, 2023, but no later than April 30, 2023. Item 15, approve assignment of sublease and acknowledgement and consent to assignment from Premier Jet Center, Inc., DBA Legacy Jet Center to Mercury Air Center, Tulsa, LLC, DBA Atlantic Aviation. Effective upon closing, scheduled April 14, 2023, but no later than April 30, 2023. <clears throat> and then item 16, approve sub landlords estoppel for the benefit of Mercury Air Center LLC, DBA Atlantic Aviation, effective upon closing, scheduled April 14, 2023, but no later than April 30, 2023. And these are all for the separate lots and blocks within that lease agreement. How do you keep track of all of that? <laughs> <laughs> great team. We've got a great team. <laughs> Approval 13 through 16. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Item 17, approve amendment number one to sublease agreement with Horton Hydraulics and DBA Hydrosource to extend temporary mm -hmm. sublease agreement through June 30, 2023. This is for Cargo Building 1A. Okay. Move to item 17. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Carry. Item 18, approve acknowledgement and consent to subtenant with RVES Co. LLC for new subtenant Ron Nelson, effective upon approval for Lot 5, Block 4, Southwest Commercial Area at RVS. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. 19. <clears throat> Item 19, approve acknowledgement and consent to collateral assignment from Camtronics LLC to Triad Bank NA, effective upon closing, but no later than April 30, 2023. This is for lots 15 and 16 of Block 7, Southwest Commercial Area at RBS. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion carried. Item 20, approved assignment of sublease acknowledgement and consent to assignment from Hawk Hangers Corporation to Hawk Hangers LLC, effective upon approval. This is for Lot 5, Block 1B, Northwest Hangar Area, Hangar A32, R RBS. Okay, move approval. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Item 21, payment has been processed since we are withdrawing from agenda. Okay. Item 22, approve sublease agreement with the United States of America Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration, effective retroactive to October 1, 2021 through September 30, 2028, with rates and fees as negotiated with the FAA. This is for the air traffic, air traffic control tower uh, space. And this is a uh, catch up from a long drawn out uh, process with them to get payment processed for uh, payments for rents in arrear and then going forward for the district. For the existing, yes. For the existing, and if yes. the new one miraculously comes online earlier, 
<laughs> we'll be negotiating a new yeah, yeah. agreement as that tower okay. is being built. Yeah. Yay, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Move this has been quite the process. Move yeah. approval of the All in favor say aye. 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 Those no. Motion carried. And uh, we do need to have an executive session. So do I have a motion to suspend the current meetings and go into executive session? Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carried. Sorry, guys. Ready to go? You need to get out of executive session. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. 934. Okay. And so there is uh, uh, when any decisions, there's nothing bringing to the board. Is there anything else uh, to come before us today? We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Okay, thanks. Thank you. <laughs>